My name is Michael DeSanzo. I am the principal here at Persimony Hills High School. This is my second year as principal, um, and I, I just want to note how much I enjoy this ceremony. Amongst all the ceremonies we get to conduct here at the Hills, the Hall of Fame ceremony is an opportunity for students, other teachers, myself, other administrators, to take a, a, a moment, an hour or two, to recognize some of the history that has come through for Sydney Hills High School. Some of the reasons why we do the things we do, or we sing the alma mater, or other things that we sing, um, recognize certain people, even why some of the things in our gym, or why stats and, and various uh, records are, are posted, we get to meet some of those people who established those those um, traditions and all the different types of things that we still recognize today. Um, we started doing that alma mater just a few years ago, bringing it back to life, and I don't know what it was like 30 years ago, but it's been a pretty big hit just over the past three years, and it's something that we hope to keep continuing and moving forward with. Um, I thank everybody in the audience today for coming to this. It's a quaint, small event, and we like it that way. Uh, it gives us a moment to really meet people and, and talk and discuss and if you have the opportunity. We have some um, some of our veteran teachers here and it's, I'm glad to see them. We also have our superintendent, uh, Scott Rixford, to my right, um, here in attendance tonight. And I thank you for coming out as well. Um, some past inductees, I don't know if I'll be able to recognize all of them, but Mr. Kenny Graham um, is sitting over there for wrestling. Um, uh, Certainly try to invite as many alumni back as we can, and uh, as many Hall of Fame inductees that we've had back to this event. At this time, I'm going to ask everybody to please dig into the food because we don't want to get cold. As soon as we get seated again, Mr. Pico will start with our first inductee, and we have about five inductees for this uh, morning. Um, if you didn't know this, your plaques here are in duplicate. We also have plaques out in the hallway by the gym where we kind of house the Hall of Fame, and we're probably close to 30 or 40 members by now. Uh, this is the fifth year, Ms. Bonnet. And speaking of Ms. Bonnet, I can't thank her enough because this is her show. This is what she hears up for almost all summer. She puts a lot of extra work into this event, and it wouldn't be possible without her. You get that call um, to, to invite you in, or you get the letter from her, she really does all of the work, right down from the decorating to setting up the food with our uh, school service, Pontonian, right down to the plaques and uh, all the research that goes into the, uh, the stats and, and the accolades that you get to see on the plaques. So thank you, Ms. Bonnet. Really appreciate that. <laughs> Introducing them, sorry. And uh, he helps uh, Ms. Bonnet out quite a bit on the end of you know, playing the historian role for the school, and we really do appreciate that. So thank you, Mr. Pico, and here you go. Good morning and welcome. Um, Sue Bonnet came up with this idea about six or seven years ago of trying to um, give a sense of history to the students who are here now. And initially the concept was just a total sports hall of fame, but we've expanded into other areas to graduates who have achieved major, major achievements outside of just their high school career. And I think it's a really a, an excellent idea. Um, those plaques that sit in the hallway, they're just not plaques. Um, kids come into my classroom and they ask questions about those people. You remember this person and so forth and so on. Um, you know, what was this team like? You know, what were sports like? So things are constantly changing, but there should be a sense of history. Um, we have several um, faculty members here and coaches from previous years who come back every year, and sometimes it's one of their athletes that are up here, but it just might be somebody they know in school. So we're very proud of our graduates, we're very proud of our school, and we want to continue this. Uh, we're always looking for nominees. I mean, we would have a set criteria that's there, but if you have somebody who thinks should be a nominee, you can go on the website, you can email Sue, um, and you can send us information along those lines. Um, we're doing this in order by graduating class, okay? And I want to apologize up front if I say a name incorrectly or get something wrong. Um, 
and in some cases there's references to people in music, and except for the four tops and Springsteen. I really don't know a lot of these names, so I apologize. <laughs> okay. The first one is Victor Juris, uh, class of 1971. Uh, just a little bit. I'm going to read your bio. We're going to have you come up if you want to just say a few words. Um, we would appreciate that. Okay. Um, he's a musician. He attended the Juilliard School of Music. Uh, appearance and recordings with noticed jazz artists, among them Bill Woods and Dizzy Gillespie. Uh, part participated in the jazz fusion movement with the Barry Mill Miles Group and duets with Larry Coryell. Uh, 1997 concert with Coriel and three other people, and it's basically the five guitars uh, playing minus. Um, he has composed and written uh, several pieces, and he is a faculty member of the Mason Grove School of Arts at Rutgers, uh, the Jazz and Contemporary Music Program at the New School University. Um, New School, which is part of New York City University, and Lehigh University in Pennsylvania. Uh, Victor George, this month. I'm so 
I'm so thrilled to be back today. Joel was not able to be here to say a few words, but part of my thrill is my feelings about the school and my fellow coaches and, and all the friends that I have here. Joel was an outstanding competitor. Um, Joel was a hard worker. He was an outstanding football player. He was a member of the championship wrestling team for two years, and he had many individual honors himself, including a fourth in the state uh, recognition. Joel was the kind of, and also a member of the track team with Nick Prudenti as his coach. He threw the javelin. Those of you that knew Joel knew he was a very intense kid. Uh, back in the day, when things were a little different, the coaches used to actually be more interactive with the athletes. Like I used to, to wrestle with the guys on the team, work out with them. I know uh, Coach Evans used to play soccer with his soccer players, and and we was more interactive than today. Today's a little bit different. But I remember wrestling with Joel Chapa on many occasions in the locker room. And boy, let me tell you, he was a tough guy. He's the kind of guy that one time I said to him, I got mad at him about something. I said, Joel, when I tell you to do something, you better do it. I said, I want you to run into that wall over there, and I want you to do it the right kind of way if I tell you to do that. He goes, what's your point, coach? Anyway. <laughs> A little coach and humor. On behalf of Joel and his family and all of his accomplishments, I accept this award. I thank you all for the opportunity. Thank you, Sue and John, for this wonderful uh, program that you put together and the opportunity to be here today. And uh, it, it has warmed my heart. And uh, thank you all. Have a nice day. Next inductee is also from the class of 1978, uh, Stephen Gunderson. Uh, Stephen was a tennis player, of course, at New Hills High School. Uh, he was a member of the Ireland Hills Conference Championship team, and Chuck, uh, I'm not sure if this is correct, but I think it is, and we don't have it. Wasn't that a state sectional team also? No, I'm sorry. Well, we tried, Chuck. <laughs> uh, he was a Morris County singles champion. Um, he received the Vincent Lorenzo Award. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Vincent Lorenzo Award, that is for the outstanding senior male, male athlete in this class. Um, he's a 1982 Morris County All Sports Award Association Amateur Male Athlete of the Year Award recipient. Um, 1978 to 1982, he attended and graduated from Ohio University. He was a 1979 medic. Mid-American Conference Tournament Champion, uh, 1983 uh, to 1986. He was nationally ranked on the ATP. Uh, currently, he's a technology coordinator for Athens City School District, and he also coaches girls tennis there. In 2013, he was the uh, girls tennis coach of the year. Uh, Stephen Henderson.
uh, got a career in technology, marriage, kids, uh, tennis coach. When I found out I was being inducted, you know, I, I took some time to reflect of all the things that have happened, all the people that have helped me along the way, and, and truly it is very humbling. Uh, and to, to sum it all up, I'm going to steal a line from uh, what Lou Gehrig said in his 1939 farewell address, and that is, today I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. And here's why. It comes down to three things. One, God. Two, people. Okay, I have a lot of family, friends, coaches, and others helped me along the way. And where I grew up and the school I went to. Um, I was pretty good at most sports I played at when I was young. Uh, God has blessed me with physical gifts that were not man-made. So, you know, I'd like to thank God for that. Uh, my godmother is here, my Aunt Claire, right here. So, uh, she and her uh, husband, my Uncle Al, and my godfather, you know, always looked after me growing up, and I appreciate that. Uh, they also owned a house at the Jersey Shore, so you know where I spent my summers. <laughs> Uh, so, second thing is people, you know, family, friends, coaches, you know, Mary Ann and Greta, my wife and daughter sitting right there. Uh, their love and support allow me to be successful with everything I do. Uh, um, and as I uh, tell my mom is here, uh, Marie Gunderson, and my dad, Ed Gunderson. Uh, you know, mom is a, sh a short, Ita dark skinned Italian woman. My dad, a tall, red-headed, freckled Norwegian, right? A perfect combination of hot and cold. So, um, I was powered by pasta, and I had the, uh, I was inspired by the Mighty Viking, which is a perfect combination for Persephone Hill. <clears throat> I had three siblings, my sister Jeannie, my sister Suzanne, and my brother Ed. All very different, but all contributed to my success. So I, I thank them for that. Okay, I grew up uh, in the great state of New Jersey, in the great town of Parsippany, and in the great, I went, uh, the great community of Glacier Hills. Um, growing up in Glacier Hills afforded me two athletic opportunities uh, that were good for my coordination athletic ability. One was swimming. If you grew up in Glacier Hills, you swam on the swim team. That's, that's all there was. A lot of the coaches here were Managers and coaches of the swim team at the Glacier Hills Pool in the summer, right, Kenny? Um, the second opportunity I got growing up in Glacier Hills was to do gymnastics. I'd like to thank a man named John Wallach for that. John was from Czechoslovakia. All the kids in Czechoslovakia, boys and girls, went to circles and did gymnastics when they were young. So when growing up there, he took a, a group of kids from Glacier Hills every Monday night to uh, participate in gymnastics and, and take us to competitions. I would also like to thank a man named Carmen Safel. Carmen was what I call the mayor of Glacier Hills. He and his wife, Chris, looked out for and rooted for all the kids in Glacier Hills growing up. Um, I would also like to uh, thank Peg Ferris sitting back here. Uh, me being here got started two years ago at the Glacier Hills 50th anniversary. And we were talking about the Hall of Fame, and uh, well, here I am today. So thank you, Peg, for that. Uh, also, the town of Parsippany provided me many athletic opportunities growing up. Basketball, baseball, football, soccer, golf, and of course, tennis. I was fortunate that Parsippany built tennis courts down at Smith Field in 1975. My freshman year, I played golf in the spring. Golf and tennis were in the same season, okay? Uh, but that summer and fall, me and my family played tennis all year round. We just fell in love with the sport, played down at Smith Field. So in the spring, I had a choice to make, whether golf or tennis. And I chose tennis, okay? I just love the sport. And like wrestling, which was king in my day at PHHS, it was a true gladiator sport also. I went to Littleton Elementary School, and uh, 
Don't tell anyone, but I used to write a line on the wall of the gym where the tennis net should be. I used to run down from my house at Glacier Hills and hit tennis, tennis balls all day long there. Okay? They, they paint the, the gym wall every once in a while, and they go right, right the line again. So. Um, went to Brooklyn Junior High School, played soccer, basketball, and baseball in the summers. Then I, I went to Parsippany Hills High School and was provide, provided many wonderful opportunities and great memories and coaches. I remember Steve Bradley, Mr. Viking, who had endless enthusiasm and school spirit. Played golf, Fred Douglas. Uh, my freshman year, I remember driving around in Fred's yellow Volkswagen, where the heat blew at full blast all the time, even in the summer, we had many hot car rides to golf matches. I played soccer for Richie Clevitz, who's here, uh, for three years. Uh, my senior year, I had a decision to make. I, I focused on tennis and did not play. That was a very hard decision because I enjoyed soccer. And uh, thanks to Richie and his uh, coaching staff for coaching me those years. I ski. We had a ski team. Okay, in the winters, that was like like my release from tennis. Uh, Gus Piccarello was the, the ski coach. Uh, stagecraft, I just took a walk through the auditorium. I had a class where we did sound, lighting, and set design for school plays as a class, as my homework. These were great things for you know, a young student to go through. Uh, I had a computer pro programming class here, Fortran, my, uh, with... Uh, uh, Mr. Rezzanini. So I got a, I got into my tech career uh, here at, at Persephone Hills High School. And then, of course, uh, my coach, uh, Chuck Pollock, is here. Um, he helped me learn the game. I didn't play until my sophomore year in high school. That's, that's, that's uh, most kids that play college and pro, they start when they're four or five. So he taught me the game. Uh, he knew when to say the right thing and knew when to not say anything on the court. It's a touchy thing when you're on changeovers and you're, you're coaching someone, how to motivate them or you know, not uh, uh, bring them down also. So I will say, Mr. Pollock, you know those marbles you've been taking out of your fishbowl all these years? Well, coaching high school tennis myself, now I could use some of those marbles. Okay, so... I loved the game of tennis, and I knew I wanted to play uh, collegiate tennis and further my education in uh, computers. Though I really wasn't that good for D1 tennis, only having played three years, I decided to go to a high university in Athens, Ohio, and it couldn't have been a better choice for me. I was a walk-on on the tennis team, okay? My coach came up to me, and we had some challenge matches. It came down to me and another player. He gave us two tennis balls and said, you guys play a set. The winner is on the team, the loser is not on the team. I won that set and made the team. From there, I earned a scholarship. I played four years of D1 collegiate tennis. I met my wife, Mary Ann, there, and uh, I made a lot of friends along the way. I would like to thank my OU coach, Dave Stevenson, uh, who taught me a lot about managing my game on the court and, uh, and being organized. Uh, when we traveled on that team, we always took two cars, okay? He liked the fact that I was from New Jersey. He just assumed that I drove fast and I tailgated, okay? <laughs> so he always had me drive the second car, and I stayed right on his rear end, and he liked that. So I did earn a uh, Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and a minor in Mathematics. After college, I played tennis professionally for five years kind of like at the baseball double-A, triple-A level. Uh, it was a great experience. I traveled all over the world, uh, met a lot of great people. Uh, at that level, you couldn't afford coaches, so we, we helped each other, coached each other. So uh, I had many other players and pros that helped me during my pro career. After playing professionally, I was a, uh, a tennis pro at a couple of clubs in New Jersey for three years. And then finally, as my friends say, I got a real job, used my college degree, uh, and have had a 24-year career in the technology field. Um, after my pro career, I did go to Chubb Institute right here in Parsippany to freshen up my, uh, my uh, uh, computer.
computer skills, and that helped me get my first job. I would like to thank uh, my first boss, Mike Duda, who is right over here at ADT Security Systems at Interface. Uh, hired me as a computer work programmer, and uh, he hired me because I was a tennis pro. So tennis has opened many doors for me in my life. I am currently the technology coordinator at Athens City Schools in Ohio. I would like to thank my superintendent, uh, Carl Martin, my boss, who hired me, and he lets me coach uh, high school girls' tennis. It's very unusual for a tech coordinator who always is in uh, need of doing tech work to, to coach, because it uh, takes you away from that important job as well. But being at the school district, I not only get to have impact on students in the classroom, but, but also on the courts. Uh, I did get my current job because I was getting ripped from my previous tech job. So I will say for some of the students here, you might get laid off sometimes, but it can open new doors and you can get a better job like I did. Uh, that was seven years ago I started there. I, I, we started with 14 girls on the tennis team. This past year we had 41 girls come out for the team. Okay? Our, uh, we, uh, we have a no-cut team, we teach a life sport, and our motto is learn and have fun. Okay? As the girls say, we never let tennis get in the way of us having fun. <laughs> and you know they say coaches are supposed to inspire their players, right? Well, I'm here to tell you today that it works the other way. My, my uh, players energize and inspire me. So, in closing, I would like to thank everyone who helped me along the way, and hopefully now you know what I meant when I said earlier today, today I am the luckiest fan on the face of the earth.
my mother, when she gets on a mission, she was very excited to try to help us get nominated, so it's wonderful to be here. Um, so as I was thinking about what it means to get a Hall of Fame award for my brother and me, and you know, for my mother to have two of us here, and I was imagining her lying in bed at night thinking, well, thank God I didn't get the Hall of Shame award. <laughs> That's next weekend. <laughs> so I, as my brother was saying, we grew up in Glacier Hills, we had great parents, and for me, I'm thinking of my dad today, but this is in their honor because having two wonderful parents in your home growing up is truly a blessing from God, and nothing can replace it, and I will always be grateful. As my brother said, my father, Edward Gunderson, he had a little known secret here in her city. He was a tall, big Norwegian, 100%. His parents were immigrants, and he always told us he was the original Viking here in her city. <laughs> he loved his school. He attended every game he could. My father used to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. He ran a very tough business. But you know what? He came to all the games he could at night. I know he loved seeing Mr. Mr. Caprio, the athletic director here for many years, and my father would be very proud to be here if he could. I'm sure he's, you know, looking down at us. Um, my husband presence here, my little daughter Margo. I'm very lucky uh, every day to share my lives with you. You, I couldn't ask for a better family, and for more inspiration and support at home. So I'm very blessed with that as well. In 1984, 30 years ago, when I graduated from this high school, Ronald Reagan was president, Michael Jackson and Madonna were the biggest pop stars in America, and yes, if you look at the plaque, my hair was many shades darker. <laughs> but today, and for more than 20 years, I've worked in, in the cable news business, first at CNBC and now at Fox News Channel. I started at the bottom, and I worked uh, my way up through the ranks, and I currently oversee some programs that you may have heard about. Um, Fox and Friends, The Five, The O'Reilly Factor, Greta Van Susteren, Megyn Kelly, Sean Kennedy, all very different personalities. I've worked hard, but I've also been very lucky. And I also know and am thankful for the experiences I had both here at high school and the fundamentals I learned in my house growing up in Glacier Hills. When I look back now, I can see Seeds were planted for me during high school to have an interest in the media, storytelling, and a career in news. In December 1980, my freshman year, John Lennon was shot and killed by Mark David Chapman. And at the time, we weren't big Beatles fans in my house, but at the time, I remember the teachers being so incredibly impacted by that death and that shooting. And everyone was talking about it in the halls, it was all over the place. And it, it did strike me at the time when I was young here. Then two years later in 1982, a tragedy hit us here at home. Amy Hoffman, a sweet and popular cheerleader, a great girl, went missing from her, she had left her job at Mars County Mall and went missing. She had a part-time job there. Two days later, her dead body was found in the Mendham Reservoir and we were all just stunned and shocked that something like that happened here. Why would someone do this? We all felt some relief when they did capture a serial kill killer, believe it or not, James Kadadich, who was arrested and found guilty of the crime. At that time, I read anything I could about her story. I, I was fascinated with every detail, all the investigation, all the advancements in the story. And that's when I was first introduced to the New York Post because Amy's story was on the cover of the New York Post. When we came out of her funeral, they, they were there, and all of you was there covering her story. It was devastating and horrifying at the time, but I remember always just feeling I wanted justice for Amy, and justice for her family, and justice for all of us who were just so stunned by this. Crime stories, trials, and mysteries are big in news. And for a few years at Fox News, I created and launched a show with Greta Van Susteren. She's a popular lawyer. She came from CNN to Fox about 14 years ago. And when she first came, she did a lot of crime stories. Uh, a missing pregnant woman named Lacey Peterson, Natalie Holloway, a young high school girl who went missing in Aruba. 
and she and I spoke a lot, and she would get very close with the family members, and we talked a lot about finding justice and telling the stories of these girls who went missing and how to do it right by then and try to help you know, the investigation and get the word out. In addition to crime stories, politics is also big in news. And I started, I started actually having an interest here, here at Pacific Hills with the IPL program. And as they said, that's the Institute for Political and Legal Education. And in the 1980s, I was really just interested in politics because I loved our president. Uh, Ronald Reagan was president at the time. I thought he was an incredible communicator. I loved the way he believed in America, and he rallied all Americans to be exceptional, and I felt that all of us could be exceptional if we worked hard, dedicated ourselves, um, were honest, good people, and had some discipline. So in my senior year, as it was said, I uh, had a chance to travel to D.C. for this model Congress, and I knew I was going to the American University in D.C., so I was excited to go, but I needed a bill to um, pass uh, to present so I'd be able to participate. And one of my fellow students named Dan Birch, a much more wild guy than myself at the time, had a great idea. We sat in the library, we co-sponsored a bill, and it was to legalize prostitution in the District of Columbia. <laughs> Needless to say, my mother was mortified. <laughs> But we had two great arguments that would be able to collect taxes and make D.C. a safer city. So we traveled to D.C. with our little bill, and an amazing thing, thing happened. There were kids from all over the country, and while all these other bills were falling by the wayside, our little bill passed, and it was the only one, and we were very excited. Again, my mother was mortified, <laughs> but that did spur my interest in politics and helped me on my path. People ask me all the time what it's like to work in the news business. What I love about it is it's different every day, but it's also very demanding. I have two cell phones and an iPad, and I don't really go anywhere without them. And when a crisis happens in the news business, we don't go home, we go to work, such as 9-11. I'm sure everyone here knows what they were doing or where they were when we heard about the two planes hitting the World Trade Center. It was a devastating time in this country, and we were at work, and you know, I didn't go home for many, many days, but it doesn't feel like work when you're covering a tragedy that this country's facing. It's just what we do, and you just go to try to work and present the best pictures, pictures tell the best stories with the best people, and serve an American audience. As I said, many fundamentals I learned here at the high school in the early 80s still hold true for me today. And it's something I talk about. I have a lot of employees that work for me and, and our team. And we talk about fundamentals. And we have kind of four fundamentals that we go by at Fox. And they're things that I can tie absolutely back to not just my home, but this high school. One of them is teamwork. I was speaking to Susan about it earlier. But everyone here, whether you were on champion wrestling team or a sport like tennis, everyone here knew they were a Viking. You know, you had the pep rallies, go blue, black, and white, fight, team, fight. I wore blue, black, and white today in the honor of the school. But team spirit was encouraged, team, teamwork was celebrated, and I learned through life that that's incredibly important. The other thing is excellence. Winning and striving for excellence every day is a key to success. And winning was celebrated here at this high school. I was on the winning tennis team all four years I was here. We were, I looked it up last night, um, Iron Hills Conference champions like four or five years in a row. So every year I was here, we were champions. My senior year, we were undefeated in the conference. Uh, I was on the winning tennis team with Lisa Stefani. Coach Ordway did a smart job putting us together because we had two opposite tennis styles and we complimented each other. We won the county championship that year. So that was really fun my sophomore year. I remember coming back to school after that, and kids and seniors were coming over to me and saying, congratulations, great. And I thought, you know what, I kind of like winning. <laughs> <laughs> winning is good. And I've taken that fun of winning to my work professionally. And just in a simple form, winning means you get to keep working and doing what you're doing. Winning means your job is secure and there's less chance of a layoff, and winning means you earn a good wage. So 
celebrating excellence, celebrating exceptionalism, definitely something I tie back to here. Attitude. While winning isn't everything, your attitude and how you look at life can really change things for you. As I told my little daughter Margo the first time she fell off her bike, it's not the fall that matters, it's how you pick yourself up after the fall that matters. Your attitude in life and how you think about life can really determine who you are every day. Uh, one of my mentors is a man named Roger Ailes, and he told me very young when I started working for him in my 20s, negative people make positive people sick. Run away from negative people. And you can train your brain to be more positive and think more positively, and then you see life more positively. And the next thing you know, you're just living a life of much more fulfillment and happiness. And truthfully, don't we all like to be around more positive, happy people? Work. My last piece of advice is just work. It's something I learned at home. My father, I, like I said, he would be out of the house by three in the morning, running his business. I always worked in the seventh grade. Um, I did get an allowance, but I always wanted more money for clothes. So I started a window washing and house cleaning business for a couple of summers, and I took all that extra cash and put it in a little you know, coffee mug in my room. In high school, I actually worked at the tennis courts here. I worked for the town. Um, but no job has beat any of us, and I've done jobs at many levels through my life. And, you know, holidays, weekends, you know, if you work hard, you know, opportunities will come. And once you get in the door, you have, you have good teamwork, a great attitude, striving for excellence, and working hard, you'll do great in life. If you told me when I was a student here in the 80s that someday I would meet presidents, travel to the White House as a guest, and travel to tra presidential debates, and on a daily and weekly basis deal with celebrities, you know, interesting characters in the media. I probably wouldn't have believed you, but that's my life now, and I have a lot to be thankful for. Many of the people are here in this room, and I just feel very lucky. So I'm happy to be, be here. It's kind of surreal to come back to your high school, and it's wonderful to see you all today. So thank you very much. As a teacher and former co-chair of course at Many Hills, it's, it's always fun to look at the historical aspect and see students who walk through these halls. But it's even more fun when one of those students was happened to be in their class. And that happens with this case. So our nominee is Joseph Stretchett. He's from the class of 1997. Um, Joe was an Eagle Scout at age 16. Um, Joe was also a DECA member, of course, at Benny Hills High School. Okay? And we all know that's the most important club in the high school. Um, Joe acts as a writer, advocate, mentor, fundraiser, and teacher for the American Federation of the Blind. Some of Joe's accomplishments. Uh, he advises states and countries on different topics and policies re related to employment, transition, and services. Uh, he serves as the North American and Caribbean representative of the World Blind Union Employment Work Group. He created an, I an online AFB e-learning center course for professionals. Uh, he participates with the National Council of State Agencies for the Blind. He has written multiple articles on the topic on, on blind education and technology. Um, in, in 2013, he was honored with the employee of the year in this field. Uh, I'd like to introduce now Joseph Stretcher. How you all doing? So usually when I'm speaking, I'm, I'm carrying around a mic, I'm walking around a little bit because I like to interact with it. I'm, uh, as you can see, I have a cane. Can't see you, you can see me. You're at a little advantage, I guess. But uh, I've been lucky. I, I grew up in a great place like Parsippany. 
uh, been impacted by having great parents, uh, such as my parents who, who are here, and uh, family, my twin brother, who was lucky, uh, nice enough to guide me up here, and uh, my wife who's here, Jennifer, and, uh, and the rest of our family and friends who are here. You know, Parsippany is an amazing place. I worked in uh, different states specific to education and rehabilitation of people who are blind or visually impaired and then also with other persons with disabilities. Uh, we were blessed with the education we were provided at Parsippany Hills High School. Looking back at DECA, the Distributive Education Cooperative of America, or IPL, the Institute for Political and Legal Education, they both strongly influenced my life and a lot of the fr my friends who went to Parsippany Hills. You know, I never foresaw working specific to anything to do with legislation and policy, whether in the United States, states, or also abroad. But I'll tell you, uh, the foundation.